Stop me if you've heard this one before. You drop 50 bucks on an exciting new RPG to show your friends that you decide to start a campaign together. You then spend hours to days to weeks preparing an awesome series of adventures, spend over an hour making characters together, then play a single three hour session and never play that game again. Whether it be work, children, or a zillennial terror of commitment, what it means for you is another Word document in your dusty collection of world building notes and unfinished novel drafts. Another character sheet and a folder that will take up desk space for a year because yeah, you'll totally finish up that epic campaign. Surely. Every game master has been here. A partial solution has been one-page RPGs and rules light games for when you want to play an RPG without using valuable time or mental effort you really need just to survive the dystopian capitalist hellscape we live in. But without any prep, it's a coin toss whether it'll be a fun time or something the GM tries to forget ever happened. This might be why it was such a pleasant surprise when I received my review copy of the Atma role-playing card game. Released by Meromorph Games, this game is meant to provide a full, easily approachable role-playing experience with no prep in the span of two hours. Past experiences with slow, rules-heavy card-based RPGs had left me skeptical of this game. Atma, however, trusts its players to know how to have fun. It borrows from rules light powered by the apocalypse mechanics with some of the player-driven narrative building of games like Dungeon World. The setting of the game is on Earth, but this mineral called Atma was discovered that emits a radiation which makes ghosts real, AI sentient, and humans superpowered. This was super cool, up until some of Earth's moons, by the way, the Earth has a bunch of moons now, snapped open to reveal a race of rock people called Titans, who briefly had a civil war, which became the Earth's problem, but now a bunch of them live here and were mostly pretty cool. However, the result of this devastating war was all nations becoming hyper-isolationist to conserve resources and protect their borders, leaving large swaths of the world a lawless, chaotic place. These restless zones, as they're called, are where the player's adventures will be taking place. The setting story isn't given to you all at once, but divulged in a very Dark Souls style, where every card has a different piece of the world's lore, creating a sense of exploration just by playing the game, whether it be setting and item descriptions, the artwork, or character cards. The characters all reflect different archetypes of this action-adventure science fantasy world. You've got the tech guy, the medic, the master assassin, an AI-powered superhero, a hotshot pilot with robots sidekick, a hotshot robot with robot sidekick, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, a robot witch, gun-wielding ghost, a ghost-wielding bear, and Malphite from League of Legends. Aliens, mechs, ghosts, superpowers. This game is like a Saturday morning cartoons comic book adaptation, and I am a nostalgic nerd approaching 30, so obviously I was sold. The gameplay is as follows. Each player will select one of these characters, each which has their own stats, special ability, and a deck of ability cards. The back of all these cards containing a piece of the character's fleshed out background story and how they relate to the game setting, dropping more hints as to the world they're from and inspiring roleplay ideas. The players will then select one of three settings, each with 51 related cards that contain story cards, one of which will decide the overarching plot of this session, such as rescuing an agent or toppling an overlord, scene cards, which are the new situations and physical locations in the setting the players will be roleplaying in, twist cards, which are plot twists for when the GM is out of ideas or wants to spice up the drama, props, which are interactable objects, ranging anywhere from thermonuclear cannons to a spongy potted plant, and extras, or the NPC cards, which have two sides to them, one for low-level grunts and basic NPCs, and the other for star extras, potentially main characters with backstory and possible motivations. After selecting characters, setting, and story, the GM will start a scene with two possible goals for players to pursue. Why they pursue these goals and how it relates to the overarching plot is for the whole group to figure out together. Let's say your setting is a jungle, your story mission is rescue a damsel in distress, and your first scene is a sports bar, where the possible goals are win a drinking contest or subscribe to this channel for more RPG content. Now that immediately seems like kind of a stretch, as you then have to figure out how a drinking contest can possibly lead to rescuing aforementioned damsel. But therein comes the creative challenge and the core of the game. Perhaps winning the drinking contest will, I don't know, impress an important NPC that will help the players to the next scene. Or reward the player with transportation or information or a compass, anything. Overall, it's up to the players which goal can narratively lead them to the final plot point, and it's the GM's job to help them make it make sense, typically with the assistance of extras or props that are already in the scene. For the challenges within the scene, players will roll 2d6s and add their relevant stats. 7 to 10 is a success, while 6 or lower is a failure. For anything lower than a 10, the GM will receive tokens, which they use to pay for twists, props, and extra cards, all of which have a cost, and can be used and fit in the scene however you choose. Hmm, this drinking contest is going a bit too well. Boom, the jukebox AI starts going nuts and attacks everyone. Bam, soldiers show up because they heard the players were snooping. Whammo, someone bets a rocket launcher you can't outdrink them. I'll be honest, there are moments where it is just hard to make cards or scenes feel connected without being an enormous stretch. Why is an international soccer team showing up at this underground weapons lab? Sure, you can read ahead at future props, twists, and extras and just pick what you'd like to use, but this takes really fast improv skills, and often speed reading multiple cards while brainstorming their next possible connectivity, which can can slow down the game if you get performance anxiety, and can make your overall plot feel a little disjointed. But on the other hand, there is an absolute Mad Libs catharsis when you do piece together cards to form a cohesive plot. Drawing the Tsunami plot twist card is exciting and makes sense for stakes when you're on a floating sea rig. Choosing an Eldritch super being extra makes sense when you're entering a fusion reactor powered by human souls. It's especially exciting when the players are the ones suggesting why they might be connected. This is a lot more collaborative than most RPGs, but less taxing on players than other collaborative story games. In fact, it's also very friendly for 
people new to the genre, and may be a good gateway into the hobby. However, I will say, in fairness, veteran players and GMs may be more weirded out by how much they have to contribute to keep the game flowing. If you're not into writing, storycrafting, or roleplaying, and you prefer to play tabletop for deep mechanics, this game won't have so much for you. It's deliberately simplified to be fast and have a focus on the story that you want to play in. Long-term viewers of the channel know I like approachable mechanics, and I love roleplaying, so both of you have probably already guessed that I enjoyed this game quite a bit. And God bless Morph, they've got a free online digital version of the game if you want to try before you buy. So you don't just have to take my word for it. If you like casual game nights and want to tabletop it up without the stress of prep or needing to commit hours to a game, I highly recommend at least giving it a look. Keep an eye out for the Season 2 Kickstarter in early August, introducing even more variety and replayability. If you want more reviews and geeking out over games, please subscribe to the channel for more RPG content. Until next time, everybody, I hope you get a game in this week. Take care.